We are back in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, and this time to go to the De Young Museum and a few exhibits they have going on today, and to the California Academy of Sciences. And if you look over there, our Tai Chi friends are back in action. As for the California Academy of Sciences, it's a pretty special place, not, because, not only because we've been going to it for years, we took our kids to it, but because it's the only place on earth with an aquarium, a planetarium, a rainforest, and a natural history museum under one living roof. I'm glad I don't have to mow that roof. <laughs> There are over 60,000 animals in residence at the California Academy of Sciences. One of the special ones is... You mean Claude, the albino alligator? <laughs> yes. Uh, wasn't that one of the things that the kids loved the most, is always having being able to go say hi to Claude? He never said hi back. <laughs> We love the rainforest because of the butterflies especially, but there are birds and insects and other creatures in it as well. And it's multi-story. And the high humidity is great for my skin. So we went ahead and we got the VIP passes or the VIP tour at the California Academy of Sciences and it was about, I think $26 a person. It was less for us as members, but if you were coming to the California Academy of Sciences, we highly, highly recommend it. We got to go up to the living roof and we got some behind the scenes into some of the research rooms where they had some specimens and we also got into a special line to get into the planetarium so we didn't have to make reservations we could just get straight into it which was definitely worth price of admission it's a great experience i've never done that before and got a little behind the scenes it was fun
The Morrison Planetarium provides a 75-foot immersive experience. Some of you might need to bring your Dramamine because it can be a little dizzying at times. The Natural History Museum section of the Academy of Sciences features a wide array of exhibits that explore the diversity of life on Earth, both past and present. Some of it feels dated, but it's always fun to see the penguins. These exhibits are designed to engage visitors of all ages through interactive displays, specimens, and educational programs. Key focus areas include geology, paleontology, biodiversity, and the relationship between the humans and the natural world. Before we go into the De Young Zeke, I wanted to know what your favorite thing was at the Steinhardt Aquarium. I would say the manta rays or the stingrays. The way they just glide is always fascinating to me. And being able to see them in the, in the waves in Mexico, uh, I always get drawn to those. How about you? Oh, so the stingrays that were right outside the planetarium? Right. Yeah. Um, for me, it's always the jellyfish. Mm. I love the gel jellyfish. Although there was a two and a half year old who got slightly obsessed over by the sea anemones. And I ended up in conversation with little Zach, or Zachy, and spent a lot of time looking at the sea anemones, because he's like, what's that? I'm like, a sea anemone. What's that? It's a sea anemone. What's that? It's a sea anemone. Spent a lot of time with that, but I prefer the uh, jellyfish. Well, I hope we have a lot of video of sea anemones. <laughs> Why the De Young Museum? Well, it's part of the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, along with the Legion of Honor, otherwise known as the Palace of Legion of Honor, one of my favorite uh, museums in San Francisco. There are two ex exhibitions of interest, for me at least. One of them is Fashioning San Francisco, A Century of Style, and an Irving Penn exhibit. Irving Penn is a photographer. Apparently he was Vogue's longest standing contributor and there are over 175 photographs covering his 70 year career. The exhibit I was most excited about was Fashioning San Francisco, A Century of Style, which explores the history of San Francisco through fashion and features one of the most iconic collections of 20th and 21st century women's clothing in the United States. Apparently, it's the first major presentation of the De Young's costume collection in over 35 years. And I can't wait to go back again in a few weeks before it closes in August of 2024. The De Young Museum showcases American art from the 17th to the 21st centuries, focusing on international contemporary art, textiles, costumes, and art from the Americas, Pacific, and Africa.
before in other videos how much I've learned to appreciate and enjoy contemporary art. And there was a pretty significant modern and contemporary art exhibit. The thing I was most disappointed by, I think, was the lack of representation by women. I think I counted maybe four or five pieces by women. One of them was Georgia O'Keeffe. We almost forgot to go up to the top of the tower, which has an extraordinary view of San Francisco. And the good news is that if you don't want to pay for a ticket to the De Young, you can just go up the elevator and go up to the observation tower. There's also a little gift shop up there if you're interested in buying a souvenir or a token to remember your trip. I don't think I have been disappointed yet by the special exhibitions put on by the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. And today was no exception with the Irving Penn exhibit and with the fashion, the San Francisco fashion through the, through the century. Uh, truly, truly impressive. I felt like I was in Paris, uh, one of the little museums while we were walking through the fashion one. You know, We've been to this museum a few times, not as many times as the Legion of Honor. The Legion of Honor, Honor feels like a European museum. This one is much more contemporary, much more American. Uh, there's still some beautiful art, and as I said, the exhibitions uh, tend to be fantastic. And if you need a snack while you're in Golden Gate Park and you're nearby, you can get one at the cafe within the De Young Museum. In visiting both the California Academy of Sciences and the De Young Museum today, I can totally recommend this as another day in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. I mean, we totally lucked out with the blue sky. Oh, you think it might be a little too much? I think it's a bit much. We, it, was a, it was a full day and we, we were pedal to the metal over at the uh the Academy, Academy of Sciences. Of Sciences. But, but, let's say, but let's say you're visiting and you only have so many days. It's like we're in Europe, we go, we go boom, boom, boom. So if somebody's trying to see as much as yeah. they... And who's always complaining about that? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> If you're like me and you start to run out of gas at about two o'clock, then just just do one, do the other on another day, or just pick one. And I guess you could also add on beach chalet or park chalet to go have uh, beverages and snacks, preferably at sunset, so you can look at the sunset over the ocean. All right, next coming up, where we headed. We're uh, going to the other side of San Francisco. We're coming back to coming back to San Francisco. Next we're week we'll have two fairly recognizable names and one nook and cranny which I'm excited about. Yeah, we're going to we're going to do some. We're looking for some sneaky stuff.